Now that you have seen how you can use objects and classes in Java, let me show you an example. Sometimes we have classes that are a subset of other classes. For example, a student and lecturer are both members of a university. When this is the case, we use inheritance to express a relationship between these classes. Let's use this as our example and focus on staff and students. In Java, inheritance is a way of expressing a subset superset relationship between classes. This is useful because when a subclass inherits from its superclass, it gets all of the members of that class. These are the fields and the methods, without us having to rewrite them or remember what they are. Here, I have a simple class called member. This class has two member variables declared publicly, name and ID. I have another class called staff, which has a member variable called salary. In Java, the key word to declare the inheritance relationship is extends. A subclass declares that it extends its single direct superclass. Let's make staff inherit from member. To do this, I can modify the class descriptor to be public class staff extends member. In order for this inheritance to work, I need to define how staff relates to the member class. I do this in the constructor. In the staff constructor, I call the member constructor like so. In this way, I have called the member constructor by using the super keyword in the staff's constructor. I will also need to initialize the staff specific variable salary. To create an instance of our inherited object, I need another class with a main function. I can do this like so. Now, let's create a university member of type staff. I create a member object, but I create it as a new staff member. If you recall from before, this will call the staff constructor, which then calls the member constructor. The member constructor sets the name and ID variables, while the staff constructor additionally sets the salary variable. I want my main function to print out the name of the staff member, so I have added a print statement into the main function. Now I compile and then run my program to check that it is working as expected. Perfect! As you can see, it is really easy to create inheritance relationships. I could now build upon what I have done so far, introducing the student class that extends member, and then contains a string for the degree and an array to store a list of enrolled courses. You'll have the opportunity to do this yourself in an exercise. Let's continue. I have commonly used the public visibility modifier. Anything that is declared as public can be accessed or seen by anything else. With inheritance, it is important to look at some of the other visibility modifiers, private and protected. If something has private visibility, it is unusable outside of this class. A subclass will not inherit private members of its superclass. If I change the name variable in member to be private like so, then my program no longer works. Another modifier I can use here is protected. If a member is protected like so, then it is similar to private, however the member is visible to a direct subclass. So when I run my program, it still works as expected. In a class, if the keyword final is included in the declaration, then this class may not have any subclasses. If there wasn't anything to inherit from our staff class, we would change the declaration to be public final class staff extends member. This can be handy if you want to prevent others from directly inheriting your implemented features. And there we go. This has been a guided example of inheritance in Java. There is a lot more to discover, and you can find more information and in-depth descriptions of the key words in the Java documentation linked below.